what is up? Cool kids. That's right. You guys are awesome, especially for watching Still Feels Kids this Sunday or Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday or Saturday or whenever you watch Still Feels Kids. I'm glad that you guys are here. Today we're starting our new series. It's called 5K Run the Race. And we're talking about practices, practices that we can do to help us love God and love others better. So this month is going to be amazing, and I am so excited about it. Today we're setting up the whole series because we've got five whole weeks to talk about these practices. So we're going to jump into 1 Corinthians. If you've got your Bibles, go ahead and open it up there. Um, but we're going to talk about how we can practice our faith. Before that, we've got a fun game. You remember that You Are Where game we played a few weeks ago? We've got another edition of that. This time, it's man-made things. Is that the pyramids? Is that the Great Sphinx? Is that who knows what? But see if you can figure it out as we zoom in on those, and then I'll see you guys after that.
guys, of the pandemic, this whole year and almost a half now, feels like forever, has taught us anything. It's patience, right? It's endurance. It's getting through the nitty gritty, the staying at home, the stay at home orders, the online learning, whatever it is, we learned how to deal with that. We made up things to do to get us through. We practiced, right? It taught us patience and commitment to get through, right? We did our homework online and we stayed at home and maybe played too many video games, but we were committed to keeping others safe and we were committed to eating through this year. And so we did it and we're here now, but now what, right? What do we do? What does this have to do? Well, here's the thing is that we learn practices. We learn practices on how to do things uh, like how to work, how to work online that took effort. That took time to figure out the best way to do it. And the same thing applies to God. You see, there are practices in our lives. There are things that we can do that can change the way we live. So we're going to go through several of those this month. Today we're setting that up. You see, Paul wrote a nice little chunk of text for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 that we're about to dive into. And we're going to check out what that means. But first, we've got the verse video for this month. We're going to check that out, and then we're going to jump into this week's lesson. I'll see you guys there. All right, guys. Thank you, thank you for that video. We're going to jump in to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. That's right. And so, uh, Paul is talking to the Corinthians, right? It's written to the Corinthians. It's a letter to them. See, Corinth was in Greece, and that's going to play in later. So, looking at... 1 Corinthians, we're going to be in verses 24 and 27 of chapter 9. So it says, Do you realize that in a race, everything, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I might be disqualified myself. So Paul is writing to the Corinthians, these people in Greece. He's using a great example, your body, athletics. I bet a lot of you guys are in sports, gymnastics, you're doing band, whatever it is. You have to train for that, right? You're not going to make it onto the varsity baseball team if you don't practice baseball. You're not going to make it onto the varsity cheerleading, uh, cheerleading team or even the junior varsity cheerleading team. You're not going to make it onto a team if you don't practice. You see, that's what all of this is about. It's practice. And this plays great into what Paul is talking to because he's talking to the Corinthians in Greece. And what are those two? Greece, sports, anybody know? It's the Olympics. You see, that's where it all started was back there in Greece, the Olympic training. And so he's making an a, a example out of the uh, Olympic training that they used to do there. Training your body. And to train your body requires something. It's a word, and it's called discipline. To train your body, you have to commit to doing something over and over and over again. And here's the thing. It may hurt. It may be hard. It may be difficult. You may not want to do it, but when you commit to doing it over and over again, it gets easier, it gets more enjoyable, and you begin to see the results come from your body. So I've got a few steps for you guys, and we're going to talk about how we could start making practices in our everyday lives that will help us grow in our faith. And so we've got some steps here, guys, and so I hope you're ready. Step number one, create a training plan. That's right. Create a training plan. So an athlete, if they want to be the best of the best, the best in the world, the best at what they do, they need a plan. They need to know what they're doing. You see, if I want to be a famous runner and I want to run the fastest time in the whole world, I don't want to go to the gym and start doing arm exercises every time because that's not going to help my legs run any faster. So you need a training exercise that works for what you're doing. Maybe you want to pray more. Work on maybe creating a list of things you can pray about. Maybe wake up just a few minutes earlier so you can pray before school. 
but create a training list, create a training plan for you to learn how to do these practices that we're going to talk about over the next few weeks. Number two, start small. Test your limits. See what you can do. For example, I'm working on praying more because, well, I want to do it more. I want to talk with God more each and every single day. Now, if I woke up one day and said, I'm going to pray for four hours straight. Dear God, thank you for this day. And I tried that. I would get distracted right away. I would last like five minutes, maybe, and then I'd get bored or I wouldn't have planned well and I can't pray for four hours if I wake up at eight and have to be somewhere at nine. So I'm going to start small. I'm going to set a timer maybe for five minutes and then maybe the next day for six, maybe the next day for seven. And I'll work my way up until I can pray for four hours, right? You might have to wake up at 4 a.m. But that's an example, guys. Start small. If you want to start reading your Bible, don't read a whole book of the Bible your first time. Read a few verses or maybe a small chapter. Go to the Psalms. But start small. Number three, fuel. Stay healthy. Eat to keep yourself strong. Oh, wait. Wrong point. Number three, fuel. Have people on your side. So unlike physical work, you know, when you're physically working out, you want fuel to keep your body going. You want uh, fuel to help you get out there and keep going. It's calories, it's science, it helps your muscles grow, whatever. But when we are learning practices of the Lord, we want people to help us keep going. We want encouragement. Maybe our small group leaders or our parents can help encourage us and give us fuel to keep trying our practices. So get people on your team and let them fuel you up. And step number four is rest. Let your body recover. What does that look like? Well, it can look like a lot of things. First, we have this cool day of the week that the Lord has told us to, to follow, and that's the Sabbath, right? one day a week, and it doesn't even have to be Sundays, maybe Saturdays, where you rest your body, right? Maybe eat some really good food, play some video games, and have a restful day. You see, the Sabbath is a huge thing that can help us rest our body, rest our mind, and rest our soul. And so find ways that you can rest. Find ways that you can get your body prepped to continue these practices. So all of this is crazy, right? There's a lot we need to do. It feels like there's a hundred million things coming at us, a hundred million different ways. How are we going to start a practice? What practice do we start? Where do we go from here? Ah, well, slow down. We've got four weeks of practices coming up, guys, that we are going to learn. And we're going to dive into and we're going to figure out how we can execute those, how we can do those. So start small. Start with some things. So we're going to go over four just four ideas for you guys, and maybe you can pick one and start this week. So practice number one is here. Can you practice from hearing from God? You see, we like to think that we can never hear from God, right? Like the only people that got to hear from God were like Abraham in the Old Testament and like, I guess, Paul on his way to Damascus. But the reality is God speaks to people every single day. And so we're going to practice that. We're going to practice listening to what God has to say. We're going to practice because he speaks in all sorts of ways. So we're going to learn about that next week. Maybe we can start there. Number two, pray. Maybe you need to start praying every morning. Talking to God and letting him talk back. And you see, prayer doesn't even have to be words, right? We don't even have to ask for God. We can just sit. And we can enjoy what God has for us. How about number three? Talk. Talk to others about Jesus. Talk to your friends at the lunch table. Talk to your parents about Jesus after school. Talk to those around you, maybe on your sports team, or that you play video games with. Talk to them about Jesus. How can we do that? Maybe that's something you need to practice. And the last one is live. How can you live with God in your life? How can you live like God wants you to live? Maybe you can practice that. So those are four things. Hear, pray, talk, and live. Those are four things that you guys can do. So write one down, and we'll go through the plans. Plan it. Create a plan for what you're doing. Move, right? 
Start small. Test your limits. Don't push yourself, but start your practice. Get others to fuel you up and to encourage you. And let your body recover. Rest. So, that's what I got for you guys. We got a worship song and we're going to close it out after this. I will see you guys there. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for his love for me who the sun sets free oh is free indeed I'm a child of God yes I am free at last he has ransomed me his grace runs deep while I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the Son sets free, who oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Forsaken, I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am. Thanks, Andrew, for those songs. And, well, we're going to wrap it up here today. That was a whirlwind of things. I hope you guys got some stuff out of it. And, well, ultimately, when we keep practicing, when we keep running after God, when we keep seeking to do things that brings God glory, we'll grow closer to Him, and that's what it's all about. It's not about being a better person. These practices aren't about doing better things. These practices are about growing a relationship with God that makes a difference in our lives. So I want to encourage you guys, how does practicing help this week? How is practicing all this stuff going to help you? Think about it. Think about ways that you can grow and how God can help you grow in those. And then let's jump on them. Let's get into this week and get ready to run the race with endurance. So we're going to do that. Remember, have your list, write your things down, and start your practice today. And I'll come back with you next week, and we'll see how it's going. I'll see you guys there. Bye.